So we talk about this idea of economic freedom a lot, and it's kind of a wonky term. What it actually means is how easy is it for people to build things in the economy? Can they start a business that they want to start or work at a company they want to start at? Creates better outcomes in terms of self-reported happiness, better treatment of the environment. I think crypto is the most important technology to update the financial system and create more economic freedom in the world. What's up, guys? It is Thursday, June 1st. It's 9 a.m. And this is the crypto newsletter. So starting out, that was Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Coinbase, saying crypto is the most important technology to update the financial system. It's happening as we speak, guys. Uh, the, the stepping stones have been laid for, for years, maybe even decades at this point, and well thought of beforehand. But they're looking to, with updating the financial system, create a more economic freedom, create more economic freedom around the world, full stop. So it's time to update the system. So let's dive into the next thing. So June 1st, 2023, this is from the European Central Bank. Stop carbon leakage at the border. Can EU companies be both green and globally competitive? And it's going over the, you know, the, the climate change and talking about the, the green transition, the energy transition. I think we actually have, yeah, today we got the uh, the second day of the Green Swan event by the Bank for International Settlements. So this is all going with the narrative of the energy transition here. So I think this is more about not not relating to green finance, but um, just more of the same kind of narratives. So let's go to the next thing. So Tether reaches an all-time high, surpassing previous market cap high of $83.2 billion. So uh, CZ from Binance said BUSD, which is Binance's stablecoin, a fully regulated stablecoin, was capped, no new minting by the New York Department of Financial Services at $23 billion, and it's now at a $5 billion market cap. Since then, USDT has seen tremendous growth. I wonder if this is setting the stepping stones as far as a potential event for Tether. It's always been kind of rumored and it's up in the air still, but uh, it just keeps on chugging along here. So then we have CFTC Risk Watchdog has its eye on crypto. The CFTC's Division of Clearing and Risk is going to be watching crypto more closely, a new advisory says. In an advisory issued Tuesday, the CFTC alerted all registered firms and applicants that the agency will keep a close eye on all new products and services related to crypto. The CFTC's Division of Clearing and Risk has noticed an increase in registrants and app applicants looking to get involved in new types of offerings, particularly with digital asset trading and clearing. Derivatives clearing organization registrants and applicants should expect that DCR will be placing emphasis on the potential risks and DCO core principles related to system safeguards, physical settlement procedures, and conflicts of interest. The DCR is prim primarily concerned with heightened cyber and operational risks, as well as increased potential for conflicts of interest with crypto, the advisory added. Companies are responsible for identifying and evaluating potential dangers associated with all new activities. The DCR, which monitors finance and risk for all derivatives clearing organizations, last issued an advisory relating to cryptos in 2018, describing guidelines for how registered exchanges and clearinghouse can compliantly list crypto assets. So as we go down here, Tuesday's advisory comes as lawmakers continue to spar over which regulatory agencies should take the lead in overseeing the digital asset space. And some congressional Democrats have pushed for granting the SEC the most power over crypto, as exemplified by a leaked House memo earlier this month. Other Democrats, namely Richie Torres from New York and most Republicans, opt for allowing the CFTC to oversee crypto commodity spot markets, including Bitcoin, potentially Ether, for now. So there we go. So we got some regulatory narratives going on. Then we got blockchain is being used to store simulated alien messages from Mars. So the process message has been securely stored on Filecoin and is available to interested participants for analysis. So the search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute or uh, SETI has recently partnered with Filecoin, a decentralized data storage marketplace to, soar, to store a simulated alien message from Mars. The project, a sign in space, was a performance designed to simulate transmitting an extra, extraterrestrial encoded message to Earth using the European Space Agency's ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter that is currently orbiting Mars. This performance was designed with the intention of involving communities interested in decoding and interpreting the message, bridging different cultures and areas of expertise. As we go down here, the role of Filecoin says, 
Unlike traditional cloud services, Filecoin addresses data through a unique hash. It's a, it's a global unique key that allows you to get rid of IP addresses, host names, its location in the planet, which means that as long as you have that hash, you can access that data from anywhere in the world. Researchers will have the ability to analyze the signal that has been stored on Filecoin from anywhere in the world through its IPFS gateway, the interplanetary file system, a distributed file storage system that enables servers to store files and data from anywhere and everywhere. They also noted all data stored on the Filecoin network is immutable and verified on a daily basis through ecosystem participants, and they are required to verify through cryptographic hashing on a daily basis that if the data is still the same as it was initially, you can be assured that the data is not changed. There's no single entity that can just pull the rug, push you out the platform and remove these data sets. So very interesting with Filecoin and what they're doing. They're in the game for the long run. So then we have opinion, Coinbase CEO. Crypto's future is a matter of national security. So it's trying to have me uh, subscribe to this. So China will benefit from enforcement of restrictive U.S. crypto policies, writes Brian Armstrong, Coinbase CEO. So this is the narrative they're going to be saying it's a matter of national security, especially with Hong Kong going live today with retail access to crypto. I'm sure there's going to be a more accelerated push to get regulations in the U.S. And that could be the golden swan moment. We could see that mid-June with the potential release of the Hinman documents, a potential resolution of the case with uh, Ripple. So a lot of things in store for the summer. I don't think it's going to be a boring summer at all. I think it's going to be a hot summer. So then we have Wahi Brothers reach settlement deal with the SEC. So another regulatory kind of piece here. Uh, these two guys were accused of trading crypto assets with insider knowledge. So a former Coinbase manager and his brother reached a settlement agreement with the SEC on Tuesday, May 30th. They were accused of trading crypto assets with insider knowledge back when they were a product manager at Coinbase. And then they, uh, the Wahi brothers agreed as part of the settlement not to deny the SEC's allegations. As part of the settlement agreement, each agreed to be permanently enjoined from violating a Securities Exchange Act. We go down here, but here there are no contracts written or implied. The developers created the tokens at issue have no obligations whatsoever to purchase to purchases who later bought these tokens on the secondary market and with zero contractual relationship, there cannot be an investment contract. So the SEC was ordered to give Coinbase a response on regulatory clarity to which the commission said deliberating over the kind of significant changes sought by Coinbase, which could affect both crypto assets and the security markets more generally takes time, including as here at time to weigh whether or not to initiate a rulemaking proceeding about such topics, topics in the first instance. So there we go. So we're starting to see some things happen as far as progress with the SEC and just uh, regulatory agencies in the US for crypto regulation. Then we have this. So it's 2023, not 2019. The SEC needs to get with the times. The SEC does have a 2019 framework for regulating digital assets, but it's so out of date, it's essentially worthless. So um, they actually, yeah, they have a document, a 2019 document framework for investment contract analysis of digital assets. So this document is not a formal rule, but given the pos paucity of clear crypto guidance from the current SEC, it's, a, it's worth examining to judge its worth. And if that's missing, what the SEC should instead provide market participants with today. Four years is a, a lifetime in crypto, that's for sure. Um, let's keep going down. So while the SEC is engaged in an end run in an end run around the political process, other countries have leaped at the opportunity to bring crypto innovation to their shores and within their regulatory perimeter. France is welcoming crypto market participants while Hong Kong prepares to accept applications for crypto trade platforms and the European Union celebrates the passage of MICA regulation. Without action in Congress or more rational leadership at the SEC, market participants will be left with a stale document from 2019 and regulatory muddy waters, not the clear skies that the SEC claims exist right there. So speaking of the European Union, digital euro may run on UTXO like Bitcoin. So the ECB expects a decision on whether it will continue to test a digital euro this fall. And I believe they said October. And then we have October 13 on our radar. Remember that. But the EU prototyped how a digital euro would work, according to a report published in late May. So the backend prototype and settlement engine, engine which was designed by Eurosystem, is called Next. Instead of using a DLT platform, which often utilize accounts systems akin to Ethereum, the governing body tested out the digital year on a model based on unspent transaction output. So if we keep going down, digital euro could support offline payments. So the prototype test took place over a span of eight months from July 2022 to February 2023, and they explored how to implement an integrated digital euro into the existing payments landscape in the EU. The platform was designed along five different front-end prototypes, user interfaces for the exercise, 
Those interfaces were contributed by private companies that responded to a public call by the ECB. The front end prototype each covered possible use cases, including person to person payments conducted both online and offline, shop payments by both a player and payee, and e commerce payments. So, yeah, they said that they're going to decide in the fall of 2023 whether it wants to keep testing and develop, developing a potential digital euro. And they've recently passed the Markets and Crypto Assets uh, Bill for regula regulating crypto assets and activities. So, which, so if you keep going down, uh, let's see. So UTXO system confirms private key holders have the power to spend the inputs or currency intended for transactions. An account-based system like Ethereum would instead check a user's token balance before allowing them to transact. While there are similarities between Next underpinnings in Bitcoin's architecture, the two networks would still be drastically different in terms of decentralization. So there we go. So Bitcoin is governed by decentralized web of various entities all working together in pursuit of a trustless money network untouched by the state. Next would instead harness blockchain and UTXO to exert supreme power over, over a system designed to enhance a fiat currency. So working with the system. There that is. Then more from the US CFTC, they warn about clearing derivatives tied to digital assets. The derivatives agency said that clearing organizations need to address risks as they move into the crypto space and suggest it's time for agencies rules on this point. So there we go. I think we covered this earlier. Then we have Bitcoin crypto prices brace for downturn and coming liquidity shock, observers say. So improving liquidity conditions so far this year has lifted risk assets such as cryptos, but the trend is poised to turn once the US debt ceiling is lifted and the treasury along with the Fed resume tightening. Crypto markets are bracing for a downturn as liquidity tightening resumed after the US debt ceiling is lifted. We keep going down here. The trend, however, is set to turn once they approve the ability to issue new debt. I think it passed last night, but it's going to the Senate today for them to vote on it. But they only got a matter of days. They got to make a move. So if we keep going down, the U.S. House of Representatives is poised to vote, vote on raising the debt ceiling Wednesday evening, which they did and they passed it. And then tighten, tightening liquidity conditions, decreasing probability of the Fed cutting interest rates this year in the present trading environment with depressed volatility and volumes make crypto markets ripe for a shock. Institutional trading platform Falcom X wrote in a newsletter. I mean, looking at the bond yields for the 10 year with the 10 day, I'm sorry, with the one month sell now coming in, it does seem like uh, the bond yields are going to come down. That's just what I'm seeing with the Stargate signals. But let's go to the next thing here, which is energy and commerce. So Chairs Rogers announced hearing on ensuring American leadership in blockchain and other DLT technologies. A lot of regulatory stuff going on. Uh, this was yesterday. House and Energy and Commerce Committee uh, had announced a hearing titled Building Blockchains, Exploring Web3 and Other Applications for Distributed Ledger Technologies. The applications of emerging technologies have the potential to increase digital commerce, strengthen our supply chains, and enhance data privacy and security. It is critical that the U.S. lead in the development of distributed ledger technologies. If we cede our leadership, other countries like China will set the rules for more control, continue to suppress freedom, and beat us in the global economy. We look forward to holding this hearing to discuss how to build a regulatory environment that rewards innovation, entrepreneurship, and ensures American leadership in the next transformational technology. So when is this happening? June 7th, June 7th. So around our June 9th to June 12th timeframe, a lot of stuff happening, man. It's going to be exciting times. So then we got TradeFi giant TPICAP brings crypto spot trading to institutional investors. The Fusion Digital Assets Marketplace opened last week offering trading in Bitcoin and Ether versus the US dollar. So the world, they're the world's largest inter-dealer broker. And they announced the marketplace for spot crypto trading and gone live with their first trade. So we're starting to see the institutions come in. Maybe we don't see it as far as the, the price goes and price going crazy, but they're buying over the counter. That's for sure. Uh, so the custodian holds. Okay. So they plan to bring on additional custodians in the future to provide more options uh, for investors. So there we go. So let's go to the next thing. All right, so then we got the European Banking Authority wants to include crypto in money laundering terrorism guidelines. The deadline for firms to submit comments on the proposed amendments is August 31st, 2023. The European Banking Authority wants to expand the scope of its guidelines for money laundering and terrorist financing risk factors to include crypto asset service providers. So if we keep going down, they... Uh Oh, also Hong Kong is another place that had a consultation period for digital asset regulation, which led to the city state allowing crypto trading for retail investors went live today. So let's see if there's anything else. 
So the European Union's financial regulator argued in a consultation paper published Wednesday that these guidelines ought to include warnings about transactions with self-hosted crypto addresses and crypto service providers that fall outside the regulatory reach of the incoming micro rules. So, okay, so they're talking about self-custody wallet like Ledger and stuff. Let's go to the next thing. So crypto traders need to pay attention to Chinese yuan. The PBOC's potential intervention to stem yuan volatility could accelerate gains in the dollar index and add to crypto market woes. So let's keep going down. I mean, we could just watch for the Stargate signals of flat. Oh, also, I think the the dollar fa- flashed a 12 hour sell now. Yeah, we got the 12 hour sell now for the dollar. And right now we're hanging on the thread at the 786 here. So if we can break that 786, have the, the candle close below that for the daily today, which is looking like it might be the case here. Um, yeah, the dollar tops in. The the twelve the last time we got a twelve hour sell sell now with the Stargate signals was back here September 29, twenty twenty two is the the top the top we haven't seen one since just now so it's looking like the dollar top is in if we go to the next thing so this is very important IRS can access Coinbase user trading data court rules so don't try to skirt the the taxes. Um, the IRS ruled a federal court that it's within their right to access Coinbase user data. It makes sense. I mean, um, I'm sure like if they could do that for the stock exchange, for your bank accounts, if they have like kind of suspicions, I'm sure, well, this makes sense. So yeah, so definitely be on top of that. And I use uh, Taxbit, I believe it's called Taxbit for um, it automatically calculates it. So then we got Hong Kong and UAE to collaborate on crypto rules. Hong Kong and UAE authorities are keen to attract global crypto companies to set up shop in their respective regions. And the central banks of Hong Kong and UAE recently met in Abu Dhabi to find ways to work together with both jurisdictions positioning themselves as nation friendly to crypto. In their meeting, the banks agreed to strengthen cooperation on crypto regulations, which they refer to as virtual assets. The two authorities say they'll now establish a joint working group. So crypto firms seem eager for Hong Kong and the UAE. So we're seeing this all kind of kind of aligning up right now. Uh, so let's go to the next thing. Hong Kong is getting cozy with crypto. So Hong Kong had made a series of moves to become more crypto friendly, including trialing a CBDC and allowing crypto retail trading. It's like all happening rapidly right now. Uh, so with Hong Kong kind of moving in fast, I'm sure the U.S. is going to pull it together. So, yeah, so they're doing like a, a cyber defender. They launched a cyber defender metaverse, a platform dedicated to educating people on Web3 technology and the risks that come with it. They lifted the crypto retail trading ban. Um, that's into effect today. And then crypto exchanges moved to Hong Kong and then Hong Kong CBDC trial. In mid-May, the Hong Kong Monetary Authority announced the trial run of the digital dollar, which is called EHKD. I think Ripple is involved with that for some reason. I'm going to have to check that out. But by promoting cooperation between the government, industry, and academia, we hope that research and development work can keep pace with the times. 16 banks and payment companies were handpicked for the trial and will test out six potential use cases. Hong Kong's banks also helped to pen a paper on CBDCs, which stated that some of the members of this group are approaching a point where they may decide on whether or not to move to the next stage of their CBDC work. There we go. So, wow, that was a mouthful today. So that's it, guys, for the crypto news. Come join the Discord. I'll put the link in the bio. We're going to be chatting it up in there. I showed an important message in case you missed the announcements here. So if you're not in the Discord, come join it. Read the message because a whole lot of stuff we're we're getting ready to unveil here. It's going to be a Stargate summer. So I will see you guys in the Discord and in the next video.